back to the studio. We're going to change gears a little bit now. We're talking to a local author who, you obviously had a certain measure of success. We've got a few books that have been published here. We're talking to Suzanne Aruda, who is out of Pittsburgh and uh, apparently likes to write about 1920s Africa. Yes, I grew up with two older brothers who kind of lived, breathed, and read, played, watched everything Tarzan, and, uh, okay. and uh, I grew up reading all of that time period and a lot of great women explorers and adventures from that time period. So my character is a compilation of all of those women. And she. Uh, got her sixth book earlier this month, the launch of The Cro Crocodile's Last Embrace, which uh, my favorite, I've read a few of the reviews of this, and I've read the book as well. I thought the best description was uh, Publishers Weekly called her kind of a female Indiana Jones. Yes, she is. She's a little Indiana Jones. She's a little Laura Croft. Uh, but I said she's also, uh, she's not out of her time period. Um, mm -hmm. A few reviewers have accused me of, you know, writing a, a modern person put in a, in a modern woman put in old times. But if you go back to a lot of the old journals and diaries, there were a lot of really adventuresome women running mm -hmm. around in Africa at the time period. So she's quite straight out of her time, actually. I could see why people might think that because it would sound in some ways a little bit more like a modern woman, mm -hmm. but, but you really pay attention to the details and there is that that interplay of the 1920s versus you know what was expected of the woman and, and women who maybe didn't quite fit that fit role. into that role. Uh, the governor's wife in Kenya at the time, she is the epitome of the old-fashioned woman. She felt there was no place for a woman in the Kenya colony at all unless she was married, mm -hmm. and she got raked pretty badly by the newspapers at the time period for saying that because there were a lot of women settling up farms in the uh, back country. Uh, who didn't take kindly to her <laughs> remarks, but she was the epitome of the old Victorian style woman, yeah, even though she was f relatively young. And then we have my Jade Del Cameron, who she's an American woman, but she's a rancher's daughter and uh, rather self sufficient. Now, have you been to Africa? I have been to Morocco, North Africa. Mm -hmm. okay. But even then, when I traveled to North Africa, in, in 2006, I don't see 1920s Morocco, right. and going there now, I wouldn't see 1920s Nairobi or 1920s Kenya. I have to rely an awful lot on the old Nairobi newspapers, which I've gotten on microfilm and, and read from the time period, mm -hmm. old manuscripts and diaries. Uh, there's a lot of really neat history out there to, to research. And I noticed that in your your introduction to the sixth book, you, you gave uh, recognition to the Axe Library at Pitt State. Oh, yes, they have been them. absolutely invaluable at finding those newspapers for me, finding obscure documents, mm -hmm. uh, getting copies to me. Uh, we tried for this book where we have the original Girl Guides, mm -hmm. which are now the Girl Scouts in the United right. States. Uh, in the book, and I'm trying to find one of their original handbooks so that I can see what their uniforms look like. Mm -hmm. Well, these are rare documents and nobody's sure. giving them out. Axe Library found an electronic copy mm -hmm. for me, so I still have it on the computer and can refer to it. And there's a lot more to talk about with this book, The Crocodile's Last Embrace. Again, it's one of six books. Uh, I'm going to tell you where you can get that and where you can uh, actually speak with the author a little bit later, actually the, the public library. We'll talk about that later in the show. So we're going to keep Suzanne here, but we're going to take a break and we'll be right back.